So, um, this probability P is rho times L and then you are left with only integral over d to b perp okay meaning uh, d to b perp is okay that is what it means and then you have um, integral d cube p1 over 2 omega p1 over region r1 and then all these remaining integrals and finally d cube p n over 2 omega p n ok. Then I should um, include this f1 tilde and it comes with um, these factors let me show you. So you have this, this this state in state, and for f1 tilde, I have these factors. Okay, so this is what I have to include. So you have integral d cube k1 prime omega k1 prime, then integral d cube k1 double prime over 2 omega k1 double prime ok that is for f1 um, and then I should I will also have for f2. So, d cube k2 prime 2 omega k2 prime d cube k2 double prime k2 double prime ok times um, f1 tilde k1 prime let me write down then I will explain why I am writing this. how do I get these functions star k1 double prime e to the minus i b perpendicular that is perpendicular b perpendicular dot k perp prime k1 perp 2 meningitis k1 perp prime ok minus k1 perp double prime f2 tilde k2 prime f2 tilde star star means complex conjugate double prime and then we have um, k1 prime k2 prime in p1 to pn out ok then we have k1 double prime k2 double prime in and p1 to pn out but this time complex conjugated ok let us see how I got this expression. So, let us go back yeah p b this one ok. So, I am now integrating over d cube b ok and I have already said that p b is only a function of b perpendicular. So, I will set b3 equal to 0 ok. So, that is why I have once I set b3 equal to 0 I am left only with b perp in this this factor and this factor comes from where 
from f1 till now. Here, f1 tilde is a function of b, and you recall uh, in the Fourier space, f1 tilde has uh, a phase factor e to the minus i, okay, b dot k. So that is where I have put b3 to be zero. So that's why you have only b perp in appearing here. So let's go back. Here, these integrals are here in this line. Then I have integrated over. Uh, B3 that gives me L rho has been pulled out, so we understand this first line. Okay, that's coming from here, and this piece, the, these three, these integrals, and putting B3 equal to zero. Okay, because function doesn't depend on probability does not depend on B3. Now, if you look at this function, this is mod square, so you have this thing times the conjugate of itself. Okay, that makes the mod square. Okay. And you have f1 b f2, but f1 and f2 they are written in terms of these integrals here. Okay, this is for f1 and similarly for f2. Okay, so when I write f1, I will have two factors of f1 tilde and two factors of f2 tilde, but one of them will have uh, complex conjugate, right? Why? Because this itself has a complex conjugate at right? this times the same factor with the complex conjugate. So, that gives a complex conjugation and then you have integrals over these f1 tildes. Okay? These factors d cube k1 prime etc. and similarly for f2. So, now you understand why I have f1 k1 prime and then f1 uh, conjugated one. Okay, but with k1 double prime because I should use different variables. Okay, so this is what has been spelled out. So k1 prime, k2 prime in state times the complex conjugated one, and these are the basis states, right? These are basis in states. Originally I had f1 tilde, uh, sorry f1 and f2. This now this two particle state I am expanding in the basis states. Okay, so that is why there you see um, not those wave functions, but then you multiply with those uh, smearing functions which are here. Okay, so I hope it is clear that you should have complex conjugates. For f1, I should have two f tildes, f1 tildes. For f2, also two f2 tildes coming from this and that. They should com come with complex conjugates. Also, I should use different labels in this one and that one. Okay. So, this is why you have f1 tilde k1 prime and f1 tilde star k1 double prime okay, and I should integrate over all of those as you have seen in the previous uh, pages. Okay, so, we understand this expression, it is just the expression for b. Okay, so, we have to now uh, work with this. So, let us first look at this part. We will we will worry about these all other factors later, but let us first look at this part. Okay, I think there is a way to copy. Let us see if I can do. Not sure whether it will work, but let us see. No, okay, one more try. Okay, it worked.
Okay, so I was lucky I could do this. Um, okay, so this is the object we want to look at, which we had here, and this is equal to. Um, we have long back written these these elements. These elements. Uh, the S matrix elements in terms of what we call M, the matrix element M. I will let's check whether we can find it easily. Yeah, here. See this. Okay. Let's. Um, unfortunately. Let's try. Okay. So here you see this is what we have now. Equivalent of this, right? We have some labels P1, P2, Pn here and some K1, K2 here in and out. So that is what we are looking at. If we ignore the forward scattering in which we are not interested in this term, interested then this term is gone. And I am looking at IT. Okay. IT is what? Uh, that is after removing the forward scattering whatever is left of s is it okay and it let me put it here and so that there is an i here also okay this it which is the s matrix element what we had done was we had pulled out for each momentum a factor of 2 pi 3 halves okay that's why you have m factors of 2 pi 3 halves 1 over 2 pi 3 halves here and n factors of 1 over 2 pi 3 halves overall uh, energy momentum conservation times 2 pi 4 and then this i m. So, that was the definition of i m. Okay? And this is uh, this element, this, uh, this product. So, that is what I am going to use now. I will just pull out these factors, pull out a delta function and write it in terms of i times m. Okay. So, this is um, the first one, this one. It has n factors of, it will bring n factors of 1 over 2 pi 3 half. Okay. Then k1 prime and k2 prime, they will become, uh, bring 1 over 2 pi 3 halves okay, each of them. So, there are two of two labels. So, they bring two factors times 2 pi to the 4 some problem now delta 4 of um, k 1 prime looks like my laptop is slowing down sorry minus summation over all this momenta pi n of them okay that's what you have and then you get i times m um, k1 prime k2 prime and they give you what p1 to p n. Okay. That is what comes from the first factor. Then the second factor gives you the following. So, each of the p n's will bring this entire factor again. So, that makes it 2 n. These two also bring the entire thing again. So, that makes it 4 2 times 2. Then again you get a delta function which is 2 pi, it is not working at all, 2 pi to the 4 delta 4 k 1 double prime plus k 2 
k2 double prime minus summation over p i okay, times minus i m okay, because we have a complex conjugate. So, minus i times m star p 1 to p n k 1 double prime k 2 double prime. Okay, we should I think I need to stop because it does not work anymore. So, anyhow that is the expression and we should now look at all these delta functions and uh, also do these integrals. Okay, because we have lots of delta functions doing these integrals will be easy that is what I will do next.